Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Is the right making a comeback in America? That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. The huge crowds at Sarah Palin's book signings were to be expected. And the governor's publisher, Harper Collins, is celebrating. Her book sold 300,000 copies the first day alone. Total in print now, two and a half million. That is huge. And testimony to Sarah Palin's star power. Likewise, the rise of Fox News commentator Glenn Beck, who drew 25,000 folks at the villages in Florida over the weekend, according to the local paper there. Beck is promoting his book and encouraging conservative and independent Americans to take back power from the liberal Obama administration. The question, does the success of Governor Palin and Glenn Beck signal a resurgence for the American right? And the answer, somewhat. There's no question that President Obama is having trouble. The latest Rasmussen poll of likely voters has 53% disapproving of Obama's job performance. On Gallup, which is across the board, it is 44% disapproval. While polls are just snapshots in time and can change quickly, Mr. Obama's bold policies of a massive government health care apparatus and trying al-Qaeda big shots in civilian courts have mobilized opposition. But it is the economy that will define whether or not Barack Obama is successful and whether conservatives can mount a comeback against him. Unemployment is still a big problem, although the outlook for economic growth is better next year. However, the USA now owes $12 trillion with a T dollars, and that debt is growing. The president is looking to raise taxes mostly on the rich, but that will not even come close to stemming the red ink. If the world loses confidence in the American economic engine and high taxation may be the tipping point there, watch out. Already, the U.S. dollar is at risk. The president must see the danger ahead, and if he doesn't, hard times are coming. The current recession is painful, but if the USA goes bankrupt, like California, there will be revolt in this country. So, it is time to put all the social engineering on hold and get back to sound economic principles. The right wants to do that, the left does not. Therein lies a struggle. At this point, conservative America is regaining momentum, and the left is on the defensive. That's what you are seeing with Sarah Palin and Glenn Beck. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, the final part of my interview with Governor Palin. We begin this evening with the hateful attacks she has endured. You, I think, have been hammered by the media more than any other politician except Richard Nixon in my lifetime. What is it about Sarah Palin that makes some Americans, primarily on the left, but you've been hammered on the right, too. I'm sure you've heard sure. David Brooks of the New York Times say, She's a joke. Uh, I mean, I just can't take her seriously. <laughs> We've got serious problems in the country. What is it about you that brings out these strong, negative emotions? I, if there is a threat at all that perhaps I represent, it, it is that the average, everyday, hardworking American, their, their voice is going to be heard, and their what our voice is saying right now is we're telling the federal government and we're telling the elites who think that they are can and should call all the shots for all the rest of us trust us and that we know what our federal government's role is supposed to be in our lives but it's that supposed to be logical. minimal that doesn't that's, offend me that's why it's perplexing as to why um, I would be, uh, you know, kind of you, you don't know left and right. really. You're sincere about you don't know why you're the lightning rod. You don't know why. Only if it is because I'm representing a normal American. Well, who why don't is, they like normal Americans? Who, why don't the New York Times like normal Americans or NBC News? Don't why? Why should they have disdain for the regular folks? Because I think that obviously they wanting so much control over our lives, I think perhaps that there is a little bit of threat there that the average American is going to rise up and our voice is going to be louder and louder and we're going to tell our government, no, we expect you to work for us. We're not going to work for you. We expect things to turn around here quite quickly, even if that means that the elites are not going to be in control anymore. I'm talking about the media. I'm talking about those in bureaucracy that are calling the shots for us. Uh, I, that's why the Tea Party movement, I think, is beautiful, and I think that it is it is empowering for so many of us to be watching what's going on with the Tea Party movement, where we're saying, that that's me. I think it's beautiful what's going on right now, and perhaps that is threatening to some who don't want to cede any control. I think that's a good analysis, but what I get from talking to you for the past hour is that you, Sarah Palin, want to lead that movement. You want to lead it. I do not need a title, and I do not necessarily you, be the one to lead it. I don't no spin. need to. You want 
to lead that populist movement. I can see it in your eyes. You want it. I'm willing to assist. I know in my heart and soul that the experiences that I have gone through, I believe that kind of what's all been put together in my life can benefit the average, everyday, hardworking American because I have been where they are. I'm experiencing what they're experiencing and I'm willing to assist, but again, I don't have to be the top dog. Weren't you happier as a regular mayor of Wasilla, Alaska? Go out, have fun at night, no controversy, do your job, raise your kids. Weren't you a happier person than that you are now? I'm a very happy person now because I'm doing what I want to do and I am as normal now as I was back then when I was the mayor of Wasilla. I'm still raising my kids and going to hockey games and going hunting and, and I'm trying to teach my kids uh, to be good citizens of this country. I, I'm the same person today as I was then minus I guess a little bit of the spotlight. Yeah, but all Nothing's those expensive changed. clothes and everything. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming in, Governor, and uh, taking the fire. And I've read the book, and I recommend it. It's a very interesting read Thank about you. how a person like you, normal person, everyday American, can rise up to be where you are now. I think it's a great American story. Well, I appreciate that, and I want people to read my book and um, see my record, know what it is that I stand for, and judge me on that. It's not all about just those 68 days of the vice presidential campaign, my participation with, with John McCain, but it's about a record in uh, local office and then statewide office that was built upon common sense solutions plugged in for the people that I was serving and never forgetting that it was a very honored position that I was given as an elected official representing people. And then if they still think that I'm controversial and whoever that dude is, Brooks, yeah. way out, is still Times calling guy. me or whatever, then so be it. But read in my own words who I am, what I stand for. Don't believe the things that are made up. And once again, I appreciate Governor Palin taking the time. And we would like you to vote in our BillOReilly.com poll. We're asking you to grade the interview A to F. You've seen all three parts, I hope. We'll give you the results <clears throat> tomorrow. Next on the rundown is the right wing truly making a comeback. We'll get a conservative and liberal view on that. And later, Ann Coulter on a religious backlash in America. Some people are faith, are fed up. Coming up.